welcome to the annual meeting of the Council R2. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome to the members of the public in attendance and also those watching our webcast. So first of all, declarations of interest. First item of business, item on on your agenda, declarations of interest. Councillors, you are asked to consider whether you have any disposable pecuniary and any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting, and if so, to be carried and state the nature of such interest. We are reminded that you should state the item number and title and the nature of your interest. Councillor Lord. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lerner. I have an um, interest in that I'm a uh, branch secretary of a trade union which is connected to licensing. Thank you. Any other? Councillor Barrett. Um, 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 I have the same interest as my partner to declare. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, could I um, perhaps make some um, civic announcements uh, before we start? Um, I would like to um, say that my chaplain is not here tonight. Um, he has a prior engagement. That engagement was um, something that he planned about 12 months ago. And this morning he's on his way to Africa for a much needed break for three weeks. So hopefully we'll be seeing him back in the next time. My other um, Announcements are first of all to thank the young people from Whitchurch High School, the drama department, and the music department. I hope people enjoyed what they saw last night at the first part of the KGM. Um, a lot of work was put into it, and um, I think every, everyone's appreciative of what they saw. <coughs> Secondly, the again, the wonderful young people from Rural Met who uh, you know, served as the food and produced the these are young people who are trained in, in that profession and I'm sure you know the way they served it and the way they carried out their duties it was just it was fantastic. <laughs> right, we'll move on now to uh, apologies. I have not been notified of any apologies. Have we got any apologies? Any apologies? No, everyone present. Wonderful. Right. Um, my first duty is to, I would like to congratulate and welcome all 10 newly elected members and the 12 members successfully re-elected. So that's nice to see so many new people here and um, also some old faces of people who were successful in May. And I happen to be one of them. Okay, um, if we use the electronic system I'm going to make this very clear, so hopefully everyone is listening carefully. I will announce when the voting system is activated and when voting on a particular matter is closed. Make this clear as well. Members must be seated in their allocated positions to vote, and proxy voting is not allowed. Members are required to press the appropriate voting button, button in front of them. Very clear, green in support, red against, white in abstaining. I think all new members had an opportunity to uh, practice that in the last couple of days. And then final voting choices will be displayed on the monitor screens and in the form of a seating plan. At the conclusion of the vote, a summary screen will display the total votes cast and will list individual member choices relating to the subject in question. Hopefully that's clear. Right, uh, item three, minutes. <laughs> Mr Mayor, if, if I may, okay. uh, as we all, all groups have new members, and I don't to all the group leaders, 
I'd like to move suspension of standing order 18, given the importance of tonight's meeting and returning the new members that all voting is done by a show of hands. Can I have someone to second that, please? Ask 
members, if they wish to debate this, I shall go straight to the vote. Okay. Right. All those in favour of uh, the proposal from Councillor Gilchrist and seconded by Councillor Clear. nominated are councillors Pat Hackett and Ian Lewis and this is the order in which we will consider the nominations. Each nominated member is now allowed up to five minutes to address the council. There will be no questions or remarks put to the nominated members following their speeches. Now since what I'm going to do is since Councillor Hackett uh, was the first to be nominated I'm going to ask him to uh, address the council the rest of the day. Councillor Hackett. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I've been privileged, Mr Mayor, uh, to be elected to lead the Labour Group and humbled to have the opportunity to put myself forward this evening as leader of the council in the place I've brought up, lived and worked most of my life. But we meet, of course, do we not, in exceptional circumstances politically, which is important for us to recognise and respond to accordingly. I refer to, of course, the balance of numbers in this chamber, the ongoing Brexit fiasco in Westminster, and how this could all play out across our communities. The fact that no party here has a, has a majority, and that we have a council with no overall control, if we allow it, could create a vacuum of leadership. But I'm determined that we, as elected members, will provide the leadership of what it is crying out for. I do believe, certainly speaking to all parties in the last few days, that we can devise a political programme that aims to win support across this chamber. Together, I do believe, Mr Mayor, we can unite around the many issues on which we agree, whether it's providing value for money services, building wealth across the North East, south and west of Wirral and playing our part in preventing the climate change crisis and ensuring dignity for the most vulnerable in our society. And together I'm determined, Mr Mayor, that we can deliver the direction of our constituents and put us here to provide. Where we disagree because of our genuine political differences, we will debate those issues, I'm sure, what we hope, with mutual respect 
and conned up uh, politics and grown up way. And, it's, and it is what residents expect, you know. Uh, they, don't, they don't like fighting amongst politicians. Uh, and, and when we knock on the door, that's exactly what they want to hear, you know, of, 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 of trying to work together. My, my, my the watchword, Mr. Mayor, will be transpar transparency and integrity. If elected as leader, I'm not going to criticise what has gone on before. I hope those of us who have known me over, over the course of the periods that I've been in this chamber will agree I have no side. What you see is what you get. As leader, I will work to be a unifying force and assure you that, what, that, that is what you will continue to, to get. Um, we can show, Mr Mayor, in this chamber, how different political groups can, as I say, work together for the common good. But it's important to recognise that we cannot ignore the messages the electorate have sent us, both in the EU referendum and more recently the local elections. And we do well to listen, because if we ignore them, the anger will only grow, as will the attraction of the simplistic solution offered by extremists who wish to divide our communities. Mainstream democratic politicians, it should be another objective that unites us rather than divides us. But of course, I do not ignore the immense challenges that we face as a council. We have, of course, have we not millions in savings to realise in the current financial year, with a total of £67 million to identify by the end of the medium term financial strategy four year planning horizon. My God, that's a mouthful. It's like the amount of money we've got to save. We have also an aging population, over 30% of our working population and uh, less than the real living wage, rising child poverty, a climate change, a climate change crisis, and of course, as I've said, the impact of Brexit. And particularly with our large employers, such as General Moses and Elsmere Paws, Camel Legs and Unilever, who have re the latter who have recently just announced job losses, putting hard working residents out of work and create, creating yet more uncertainty for families. <coughs> we also have unique assets that we should celebrate and exploit. We are, Mr Mayor, part of a combined authority favoured by governments with the developing menu of powers and resources to enable us to address the years of failure of a one-size-fits-all <laughs> approach from Whitehall by taking decisions that are right for our local economy. I'm sure that's something we all agree on as well, doing things locally and having the money coming here locally, the more of that the better. I'm particularly passionate about the opportunities this provides for local wealth building in our communities and we will pursue that with determination. And I'm sure, as I said, we can all get behind that devolution agenda. <coughs> change is coming and change which has the potential to have a lasting impact on our place and our people. Working together, as I said across this chamber, we can look at different ways of working to build, for instance, new affordable homes for rent, for, for will families. Can I have to Can I just finish with one last thing? Yeah. So that's my prospectus. Let us hear the verdict of the local residents. Let us see this as an opportunity to come together to deliver people's priorities. Let us restore faith and confidence in our democratic politics here in the world. Let us get to work on Amsterdam. Thank, Thank you. you. Tony Blair, the way in which this council is run puts too much power in the hands of the leader 
who in turn has involved too few people in the decision making. It cannot be right under any system that a cabinet of 10 leaves the other 56 in limbo. It can be of no surprise that a bad system of government leads to bad decisions. Therefore, if elected as leader tonight, I will seek to appoint an all-party cabinet, recognising that all parties have a role to play, but at the same time, it will also be this borough's last cabinet. At the first meeting of the cabinet, I will seek to support to scrap the, the cabinet system in time for next year's annual council and revert to a committee-based system with all decisions made in public. As well as Decisions, we must also involve more of the public. Too often, people are having decisions made about them, but without them. At the first meeting of Cabinet, I will also therefore seek to co-opt members of the public with specialist knowledge or community support to the scrutiny committees. Mr Mayor, personally, I grew up in a rented house that was often cold and damp. I attended a primary school that was so bad it had to be renamed. I was assigned to a local comp that was so ineffective it has since been demolished. Mr Mayor, that was in Highton, which had been run by the Labour Party for as long as anybody can remember, and where my father's family had been relocated to after the war from the slums of central Liverpool. That is why, for me, housing and schooling have the power to be transformative. If we get them right, we can ensure that no child and no family is left behind. If we keep getting them wrong, we are consigning too many of our residents to never reaching their full potential. It also cannot be right that we collectively allow children's services to be overseen by unaccountable, unelected bureaucrats appointed by London. We must never allow that to happen again in any service that we are elected to run. Equally, Mr Mayor, from the day I was first elected, I have never been afraid to say when I disagreed with the government, even my own government whether that was on the bedroom tax or more recently on the Tide campaign. After 15 years, Mr Mayor, this council, uh, 15 years rather after this council transferred its own housing stock, there are still more than 9,000 families on the housing waiting list. Therefore, Mr Mayor, at the first meeting of Cabinet, I will seek support to instruct senior directors to review the creation of this borough's first new council housing for 30 years. This will be on council yeah, yeah, yeah. brownfield sites in existing communities and to focus on meeting the needs of our most vulnerable citizens. This new council housing will be council owned and council run and will seek to do what sadly too many of our social landlords have so far failed to do. I will also seek, Mr Mayor, support to amend the objectives of the proposed World Growth Company to include a social obligation. This will ensure that no services of no services on the assets currently under their control, such as libraries, youth clubs and leisure centres, are lost in the name of progress. Mr Mayor, I will also seek to appoint an advisory group on the borough's Green Belt, including representatives from the Wirral Green Space Alliance and Defend Wirral Green Spaces. gives their views, but their views are acted upon. We will look to bring in more empty homes back into use, and Mr Mayor, they are some of the things that I've outlined I would do. I would now like to turn to some of the things I won't. If elected as leader tonight, within the first 60 days, Mr Mayor, I will seek to cancel the following. Terminate the agreement for the Hoya Lake Golf Resort. <laughs> directors on excessive, di uh, ex excessive salaries, reduce yeah. the yeah. 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 scrap the failing rural view, ban oh, yeah. lending oh. rural's money to other councils, yeah. scrap yeah. car parking in other country parks, remove Brackenwood Golf Course from the Green Spaces Review and confirm yeah. the yeah. 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 Mr Mayor, that is not, Mr Mayor, finally, I recognise that as things currently stand, whoever is elected tonight is elected for a term of four years. And so, I'm on the last paragraph, Mr Mayor, I have been interrupted with fairness. And so, the Council, Mr Mayor, will not have a say on that person's performance until 2023. If elected tonight, I will submit myself for re-election in 12 months so that every, every member will have the opportunity to decide whether I have delivered and whether we're in 2020 
uh, I'm now going to ask the monitoring officer to read out the names of each councillor and sorry. Um, oh, sorry. I understand that there is a request for recorded vote to provide clarity of voting. So um, I'm going to ask the monitoring officer to read out the names. Oh sorry. Well, I think. 
makes it simpler, doesn't it? I do apologise. Uh, hopefully I'll also get pronounced the new name tonight. Uh, I did have a, uh, an interesting start the first time I did this. Uh, Councillor Shannon Jones. Councillor Pat Hackett. Good to see you in this Councillor Tony Jones. Councillor Hackett. Councillor Jordan. Councillor Ian Lewis. Councillor Kelly. Not her too. Oh, oh no. No. absolutely scandalous. It's oh, treacherous. Okay. It really is. Councillor Kelly. Councillor Pat Hackett. <coughs> Councillor Leach. Councillor Pat Hackett. Councillor Lewis. <laughs> Councillor McLaughlin. Ian Lewis. Councillor McManus. Councillor Pantakis. Councillor Mitchell. Not voting. Councillor Muspat. Councillor Nolan. Councillor Hackett. Councillor Norbury. Councillor Hackett. Councillor Bogle. Councillor Lewis. Councillor Benny. Ian Lewis. Councillor Robinson. Councillor Hackett. Councillor Rowlands. Councillor Ian Lewis. Councillor Smith. Councillor Spall. Councillor Hackett. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Pat Hackett. Councillor Stapleton. Councillor Pat Hackett. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Pat Hackett. Councillor Sullivan. It's very happy to vote for Councillor Ian Lewis. Yeah, well done.
meeting with the other parties over the course of the last week or more in the space of I don't know, <coughs> five or six days. Uh, or, yeah, but we, we, we've actually worked together, I think, well, and, and, you know, and we've agreed on, on a lot of issues. And I think that's important during the coming year that we actually do that. And, you know, I've listened to what Councillor Ian Lewis was saying in his speech, and I was about to finish with a lot of that in my speech. <laughs>
Um, we're now going to have an adjournment just for 10 minutes while the leaders get together for a discussion. So if you could have a break for 10 minutes.